Good morning internet, it is 20 past 7 in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here in Wiseman, Alaska. I, I don't really know what to say uh, to start this video. Today I'm going to ride to Prudhoe Bay, which is where the road ends. After that it's only Arctic Ocean. I, I started my Patagonia to Alaska journey nearly three years ago and it feels so surreal to be here right now and knowing that today I'm going to complete that journey. It will be about 400 kilometers and my biggest hurdle is the Brooks range that this mountain range which is laying over here it's already been snowing up there so my weather window is closing real real soon now. Let's go! I've waited out the weather, the snow, for a couple of days. So in the meantime, I also moved a uh, place to stay. There's two places to stay in Wiseman, and now I've stayed at both of them. <laughs> because the other place was uh, booked for the second night. But now the weather is really good. Look how gorgeous it is today. It's cold. It's cold. It's probably only maybe just above freezing, probably. So don't let the sun fool you. <laughs> it is very chilly. There's loads of sled dogs here too. See? I don't know if you can see them. Here. Hi, doggies. Isn't Alaska just beautiful? I've come to realize that Alaska, this place, it's, it's a feeling. I think that's the only way I can describe it. It's so much better than I ever thought it would be. You really feel that lost frontier feeling here. That's the best I can describe it. Also today, in between Wiseman here and uh, Dead Horse, which is the town at Prudhoe Bay, there is no, no towns whatsoever. Back at the, at the main road, at the Dalton Highway. Look at this fog here. Wow. here unbelievable I am slightly worried though about the clouds ahead because uh, the fact that it's sunny on the south side of the Brooks range doesn't actually tell me how it's on the north side but uh, over there there's some clouds hanging so I hope it's not snowing Just here, hey! <laughs> I have to enjoy this because uh, after the Brooks Range, if I cross this, it's gonna go down, and then the last bit it's all flat, flat tundra. So these are the last mountains, the last mountains of this journey. closer and closer to that snow line. See the, the road climbing there 
in the distance, so it's not gonna be long now. Avalanche area in the next five miles. I don't think there's enough snowfall yet for avalanche danger. I can't believe I'm here. Can't believe it. Because there already has been snow here this season, right here on the pass. But the sun has uh, melted it away again and the road's actually dry, so I am super lucky. Ooh. Right, let's quickly ride to lower elevation because Oh, the wind, it is so cold here. It's icy, icy cold. I am leaving the Brooks Range. This is the end of the mountains. It's all gonna be flat after here. Caribou! These are my first caribou in North America. I've seen them, of course, in Norway. Gorgeous, right? So beautiful. Hi, guys. Emotional. 
but so much has happened. So much. I began my journey in Buenos Aires, Argentina. From here, my goal was to ride south until the southern tip of the continent. From where, I would turn around and start riding north until I would reach the northern tip of the continent. My very first day on the road and I rode straight into a thunderstorm. I came down with the bike on some slippery mud and I pulled a nail out of my rear tire. And then I also lost the bike's plate, so I had to be a little creative with Carton. I started to get the feeling that this journey might not come without any struggles. Extremely strong winds and flat, flat terrain characterized my journey south towards the most southern point of the continent. But this gave me the opportunity to improve on my filming skills, as half the time my efforts resulted in shots that weren't quite usable yet. Finally, snow-capped mountains appeared at the horizon, as well as the end of the road. I, I'm turning around, so this is the end of the road, this is the furthest I can go on the continent. So from now on I'm going the other way. And the other way meant north, along the entire length of the Andes Mountains. I kept on hopping across the border between Chile and Argentina and back to catch as much of the mountains as possible. The Andes quickly became my absolute favorite mountain range in the world. I saw every color that nature can show us, and often the colors were so vibrant they almost hurt my eyes. I crossed high passes and rode through deep valleys, over narrow tracks hugging the mountainside, and past high altitude lakes. The dark ashes of an active volcano are tough on motorcycle tires, but were an absolute unforgettable motorcycling experience. From sunrise to sunset, I spent hour after hour on the seat of my motorcycle, and I still wished it could have been more. Going uphill at 3,800 meters altitude in this stuff. <gasps> These high altitude, barren landscapes are not for everyone, but they are for me. Places like these make my geologist's heart beat faster. When it's just you and your motorcycle, surrounded by nothing but hundreds of kilometers of fast landscapes, you have to put all your trust in your motorcycle and yourself. It's an incredible feeling. This is my happy place.
and after months of exploring dirt road after dirt road in the mountains of Chile and Argentina, I finally reached Bolivia. It is almost impossible to find my way here. Just with all these tracks and now I'm, I'm following this one. Maps me keeps on sending me back. Kind of like sending me in circles. So I don't really have another choice to try to follow this, but every, every time I think I'm on the right path, then the track disappears or it just goes in another direction. It's really difficult navigating. And with all these tracks everywhere, it kind of gives the feeling that this is some sort of major highway with loads of traffic, but I have a feeling that actually not many vehicles pass here. Riding across the Altiplano, the high mountains, was tough. It was hard to breathe, the roads were rough, and often I just felt like I was riding on a different planet altogether. the road. Just going to do a little check what would be the best way for me to go. This looks pretty deep everywhere. Oof. Oh wow. This is all washed out. That last bit really, pff, I'm not gonna lie, it was not easy. Now I'm on, okay, it's not asphalt, but it's kind of half paved, uh, pretty compacted. So uh, easy riding, should be easy going from now. From the high mountains, I finally descended into some lower mountains. And the further I went, the greener everything became. Maybe I'll go here. Here, 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 here. I'm just worried that the stream will take me. But while I was battling some of the scariest moments of my entire journey, news started to trickle in about a virus. At first, all of this was happening far away from South America. Rumors of the border between Bolivia and Peru closing led me to abandon all my planned Bolivian jungle adventures and to hurry out of the busy city of La Paz and cross the border into Peru. Within a few days, Peru also completely locked down internally and I got stuck in a small town called Lampa. After 14 days in a small guesthouse room and together with the help of the locals and the Dutch embassy, I managed to escape Peru. This meant abandoning my motorcycle and returning to the Netherlands empty-handed. I didn't know at the time that abandoning the motorcycle meant the end of this motorcycle and I would never ride it again.
I couldn't sit still in the Netherlands, so I bought a second-hand Honda CB500X to ride around Scandinavia and Iceland. And then I bought another second-hand motorcycle, a CRF 250L, to ride around Southern Africa. I thoroughly enjoyed these adventures, but secretly I kept plotting a return to South America. After the good experiences with the 250L, I decided to buy a brand new CRF 300 Rally. I bought it in the Netherlands, so I could register the bike on my own name and left in the early hours of the morning. I rode to Hoek van Holland, where I caught the ferry to the UK. Here she was crated and made ready to be put on the plane to South America. Since Peru was the only country that still had its land borders shut, I decided to ship my motorcycle to Ecuador. Compared to its neighbors, Ecuador is a small country, but you can find everything here, from beautiful beaches at the coast, to the high mountains of the Andes, and the tropical Amazon rainforest. I immediately nosedived into adventure here. Buenos dias, pero es como 30 centimetros, so... Okay. Que le vaya bien. Ciao. Luckily, I only ended up with some water in my boots. I didn't let the opportunity slide to ride on the narrow rim of a volcano, and I headed even higher up into the mountains. It's absolutely freezing in here, as you can probably tell. I can see my own breath, so that's how cold it is. There is no heating, nothing. I stayed at the foot of the Chimborazo volcano, of which the top sits at 6,300 meters. However, the earth is not a perfect sphere and instead bulges at the equator. And that makes that climbing to the top of this volcano means that you are the closest to outer space than any other place on earth. After pottering around in the Andes, I finally turned my attention to the Amazon. Face to face with one of its many large rivers, I could only get to the other side, which was on top of a hill, by getting my bike and myself in a tiny steel cage. Without the two local boys I met there who helped me, I'm not sure I would have mustered up the courage to get into that thing at all. I walked up at the house of some Achuar indigenous people. They led me, first by motorcycle and later by foot, far into their lands and let me stay in a small hut where I could shower in an amazing waterfall.
A visit to the mighty Cotopaxi volcano seemed appropriate before finally leaving Ecuador and crossing the border into Colombia. Hola. Buenas, ¿cómo está? Bien. <laughs> Por fin. Por fin. Pero, pero le toca esperar un momento. It was a dreadful border crossing and patience was key here. But somehow I got across and after admiring a stunning cathedral close to the border, I was ready to explore Colombia. Look how bad the visibility is here. I can barely see anything, look. I have about uh, 45 kilometers to go. So I don't know if it's 45 kilometers like this. Ah, okay. Yeah, esa es la única. Yeah. Look ahead, look ahead. Don't look down. Don't look down. <laughs> what did I say? Don't look down. It's very slow going. I think I'm actually going to arrive in the dark in Turbo because it's still 160 kilometers and it's three o'clock. And uh, yeah, average speed is low. As soon as I reached the north of Colombia, I started plotting the most dangerous border crossing I'd ever done. So there is about 70 kilometers of swamps and thick, thick jungle, which sits right here in between Panama and Colombia. Now this Darien Gap is really dangerous terrain. So besides uh, poisonous snakes and other creepy crawlers, there's a lot of drug smuggling going on. So there's a lot of people around that area that you really don't want to encounter. Avoiding the dangerous Darien Gap wasn't a walk in the park. I got in touch with some locals who are paid to get me across by boat. What that meant was getting my motorcycle into two different tiny boats and spent three days on rough seas. See, the sea is a little rough. You can see it. I have my own ideas about how to do this. Podemos usar este también. Oh, what a ride. 
ride for a ride. <laughs> and that was absolutely mental. It is, uh, what is it? Quarter to seven in the morning. Today is the biggest day of the Darien Gap crossing. I'm trying to reach uh, Panama today. He just told me that the, the sea is rougher than yesterday, which I'm not so happy with. But uh, yeah, so now just going to the, the pier, load up Alaska on another boat and then uh, try to get it to Panama. Panama. Okay, he's not as enthusiastic as me, okay, but I say, <laughs> welcome to Panama! Uh, and on to the next, uh, yeah, many, many hours that we still have to uh, sail. So everybody, fingers crossed that the seas are going to be calm and it's not going to be uh, so crazy like uh, this morning or yesterday. There comes a speedboat at high speed and, and there's three guys on them and one is waving a massive gun, it's like a machine gun. Um, he had full face covering, even his eyes there was like some sort of mesh here so you could not see anything of his face and, uh, and then he had a hoodie over it and the other ones were also wearing like face uh, coverings and they're shouting things and he's like waving the gun and... <laughs> I finally made it to Panama in one piece. It was the beginning of a new chapter, Central America. I explored the new high-rise of Panama City, as well as the historical buildings of old Panama City, and, of course, I paid a visit to the Panama Canal. Most travelers just hit the Pan American Highway and pass through Panama quickly. But I wanted to explore a little more. No highways for me. Buenas. Eh, hacia dónde va? Voy a uh, Playa Escondido. Escondido. Okay, this way. Woo, where am I going? I thought uh, this was a road. I have to follow it for a little bit more. I'm kind of picking my line now. I think I'm gonna go up this route. Then I'll have to go through this water to the other side there. Because these rocks are very difficult to ride over. Oh no, I have to be here in the water because this you can barely see it on the GoPro. But I can't see it now. No. But trust me, this is not nice to ride on. So I'll go through the water. I'll have to ride up this because I can't ride through here. And there's the road again. Panama has tons of mountains and tons of rainfall, so I faced many water crossings. Oh no, it is deep. It is very deep. Oh. Ese es más mejor. Okay. Hola. Hay, hay otro puente, o solo este puente. Oh.
Let's see, that's my foot. Let's see how big it is. Wow, incredible. So this river is the main way of how yeah, people get around cool. here. Is it the river Bonjig where the represa in the cordillera? In that cordillera is the represa. Ah, ya. Yeah. Por la hidroeléctrica se ha secado el río hasta el momento donde lo ves. Ah. Entonces por esta razón hay poco agua ahora. Sí, ahora por esta razón hay poco yeah. agua. Ya, yeah. ya. ¿Cómo funciona? Ah, wow. Y aquí se mete el, el dardo, la lancita. Eso vuela. Ya. Yeah. Um, and this ¿Cómo se llama esta otra vez? Esta cosa? Ñampi. Ñampi? Ñampi, Ñampi. Ñampi. I don't know what Ñampi is. And the uh, frijoles, which are uh, beans. My Panamanian shenanigans came to an end as I crossed the border into Costa Rica. Bien. ¿Y usted? Bastante bien, gracias a Dios. Mejor ahora que la estoy viendo. Costa Rica is well known for its active volcanoes. So I spent some time admiring and fearing them. Oh, that! No problem. It's a rally, man. <laughs> ah, you come with the water up to here to the back. As I was figuring out whether or not I could cross some rivers on my motorcycle, I met a local guy named Hugo. He offered to show me the way, which I happily accepted. These rivers in Costa Rica have huge crocodiles in them, and I had to cross three rivers. Ay, no! No, hombre! <laughs> I had to end up there. <laughs> Still very shallow. No hay crocodilos! Si, sí. aquí no. Aquí también. I don't know if I have to be afraid more of the river crossing or the crocodiles. <sighs> no vemos. to go. There's uh, crocodiles in all of them, he said. I managed to get through all three rivers without having to wrestle a crocodile, and I made it across the border into Nicaragua. Buenas. Hola. Seguro? Si. Sí. Eh, Permítame el documento que le dio el, el inspector de aduana para elaborarlo. Si. Sí. Sí. Colones, Córdoba. ¿Cuál es tu precio? A 50 por mil colones. As if all those boats to reach Panama wasn't enough, I hopped on another boat to reach the volcanic islands of Ometepe on Lake Nicaragua. I was haunted by visions of my bike sliding over the edge the entire way. But the adventure riding on the island was fantastic. from tall waterfalls in the jungle to uncovering ancient indigenous art with a local girl that I met. It was all there, completely overgrown, hidden by the jungle and forgotten by the people. After carefully aiming to chop off a few fingers, I managed to get my hands on a ticket to leave the island on an overnight ferry. Right, the only thing to do when you are faced with blurry music is to just embrace it. It's going to be a very long night. in San Carlos and I am immediately going to inquire about the next uh, leg of my journey. Puede ser con mi moto en la lancha. No. 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 A 
According to the officials, it wasn't possible to bring my motorcycle on a boat. Time to think outside of the box. I found the weekly cargo boat, bringing supplies to one of the most remote corners of Nicaragua. I negotiated the price with the captain and it was on. And so, a two-day, 200-kilometer river journey started and I spent the next two days on this slow cargo boat with this crew of locals. There are no roads that lead to the village. This was the only way. And it turned out I was also the first person to ever bring a motorcycle there, as there are no motorized vehicles in the village. Experiencing the jungle from the river was like magic. It gave me a rare insight in the life of the people here too. Food was being caught straight from the jungle and consisted of iguana, big lizards. Dos más. Oh, so the, the escape mechanism of the iguanas when they sense danger. Oh. Two more is to drop themselves into the water. You see this one tree, it's just full of them. I think, wait, already five dropped in the water. He caught one. He, look, he's now, he's now just up there. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, yeah. It tastes like chicken. We arrived in the night on the second day. How the captain managed to navigate the waters in the dark, purely on memory and without using any electronic equipment is beyond me. After arriving in the village, I continued further into the jungle to find what I came here for. Find a Rama guide to show me the way to the hidden city of Cantagallo, a stunning geological feature and used throughout history by the natives. This is unbelievable. Look at this. I don't think I ever made such a big effort to get anywhere, but it was all worth it. And yes, the only way to get out of here again was by boat, of course. But don't worry, by now I vowed that this was going to be the last sketchy boat ride of this journey. But uh, we hit a big wave and then... There went our side stand. Poor Alaska. Poor Alaska. Poor Alaska. <laughs> Yeah, that happens sometimes. All right, uh, we are in Bluefields and um, I'm first going to the ATM because I didn't actually have enough cash on me to pay for the passage. In Sog 1 there was no ATM, but they trusted me enough <laughs> to bring me here. So now I'm first going to get some money. Well, they are going to get Alaska out of the boat. Again, maybe it's better that I don't see. I told them, remember, the side stand's broken, so you can't put her anywhere. But they were like, no, that's fine. So, Stadi, aquí. Oh, aquí está. Uy. Mi amor. The things I put her through, hey. No worries, sweetheart. We're going to put you right up. Actually, this is the second side stand <laughs> that I managed to break. I broke one uh, on my Royal Enfield as well, uh, back somewhere in South America. I think, where did it happen? Argentina or Chile. Uh, back then, I was too embarrassed to film it. <laughs> and now I did it again, completely different way. But uh, yeah, that's just how it goes, hey. Because of my geology background, I am interested in minerals. But seeing how a gold mining operation looks like in Nicaragua is a humbling experience. It's very dangerous and unhealthy work, and the average worker only makes about $10 a day. Even though these mines are very rich in gold, that money just doesn't seem to end up in the pockets of the actual workers. 
Y lo que empacan es esto. Sí. ¿Cómo? Hay nadie. <risa> sí. Ya, ahora sí. sí. Despacio. Oh, espera, espera, espera. Espérese, espérese. Espere. Nicaragua is a land of opposites, and so from being meters on the ground, I wrote to the Cerro Negro, Central America's youngest volcano. I went with a local to show me the way and help carry the board all the way to the top. And well, it went only downhill from there. After he gave me a ride back to my bike, I continued to the next border. Ah, okay, oh, lo siento. <laughs> Welcome to Honduras! Woohoo, I'm here! Yeah, that went really well. Oh, are we riding on the left side of the road here? Are we riding left or right? That's actually a good question. Surely, yeah. Or oh, maybe we're riding on the left side of the road. No, we're on the right side. Nah. We're just going against traffic then. I don't know. I'm so confused. Honduras doesn't have the best reputation and is generally considered a very dangerous country. But the armed guards at petrol stations, some roadblocks. It's like they're blocking the road. See on the other side of the road as well. One little scary incident aside, I just experienced the beauty of Honduras and saw places not many people dare venture to. later I entered the next country, El Salvador. Eh, voy a cruzar a El Salvador. Voy por acá. Welcome to El Salvador. The bad news is there was no customs on the El Salvadorian side and now basically Alaska is illegal here. I said what about my bike and the temporary imports and they were like well we don't have customs here so just you can just go <laughs> so I'm like yeah but won't I get into trouble when I try to leave El Salvador and they're like yeah maybe I'd made a big mistake by crossing the border at a place without customs my motorcycle was now illegally in the country and I didn't know how to get it out again without getting into trouble yet again luck was on my side my good friend, Charlie Sinewan, had also just entered El Salvador from the other side and he knew a good guy there at customs. I quickly made my way across the country to go and meet him and make a plan. <laughs> there is his bike. No. <laughs> ah! 
<risa> It's so good to see you. <risa> ¿Cómo estás? Bien. ¿Y tú? Bien, very busy, but good. Me acaba de mandar Jaime, un amigo, un teléfono de alguien que está en la aduana. Entonces vamos a llamar ahora. Pues mira, estoy aquí con una amiga con pasaporte, ella es holandesa, que entró por una frontera muy pequeña desde Honduras. Entonces ahora tiene que salir, pero la moto no tiene, no tiene la importación en el país. So here we have the two professional travelers. First of all, see, is it illegal in the country, the moto that is illegal. And now, realize that... I might need a COVID test. Fucking disaster. It wasn't easy, but with the help of Charlie and some very nice custom officers of El Salvador, we got it done. And I could leave the country, legally. Don't cry too much, eh? No. <laughs> All right. Here I go again on my own. There we go. Crossing the bridge. Leaving El Salvador into Guatemala. I won't lie, Guatemala is my absolute favorite country in Central America. I dipped into crystal clear waters in the mountains and I even showered under a natural thermal waterfall. Guatemala turned out to be an exceptional place to ride a motorcycle too, but not without some challenging terrain. But this is probably the one I should take. It's rough. Oh yeah. Okay. At first, I need to make my way up over this. viajando sola en moto, uh -huh. pero me dijeron que hay un parte del camino uh -huh. que es muy peligroso, que se roban. Uh -huh. Parte que hay una extranjera. Holandesa. Holandesa. Izquierda, pero esa ruta a Chicacao, Chutepec, no es. Ok. Pero ahí la vas, ¿verdad? Sí, creo que. Adiós. Okay, very nice uh, policeman. It's about three kilometers from here. The asphalt will stop. And then uh, a little bit further on the dirt, there's a patrol car. 104 is their, I don't know, name, number of the car or the plate. I think he said 104. And uh, they're waiting for me to give me an escort, so. Es muy difícil sin. Muy difícil, pues. Necesito velocidad. ¿Conoces una mujer se llama Feliciana? Uh, ¿Usted conoce Feliciana? La señora Feliciana. 
Ah, sí. Ok, un poco más adelante. Hola. Buenas. Eh, Doña Feliciana. Feliciana López. Tengo, tengo el número de ella. Feliciana. ¡Yay! Opa. Sonríe la cámara. After locating three other Felicianas in Guatemala, I finally found the one that I was supposed to meet for lunch. Omelette, vegetables, then there is lots of tortillas, and these are the stuffed tamales with chicken with tomato sauce inside. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Soon after, I faced a bigger challenge. My mission was to find the remote Mayan temples of Nakum, hidden deep in the jungle. It was so swampy that wrestling my bike through the mud was almost more than I could take on. I definitely didn't have the right tires to tackle this type of terrain. But the reality of long distance motorcycling in areas like these is that you don't have a choice in tires. You are blessed enough if you can just find something made out of rubber and in a round shape. Ah! Yes. I saw a big animal, I saw a big animal, and I think it was a cat. It ran really fast into the jungle here, but I'm not sure. It was a, a split second, and it was standing on the road, and it just jumped into the bush. Oh dear, where am I going? But for some reason I was so determined to get there that I kept fighting uh -huh. and eventually found the place. Okay, don't ask me how I got here. But this, I'm now standing on another pyramid. I don't know which part was harder. To get here or then to actually find the temples and the pyramids. Both equally not so easy. Muddy and exhausted, I reappeared from the jungle and continued towards the next country, Belize. We're visiting, we're visiting. Welcome to Belize! <laughs> Belize is only a small country, but for the ones that look, adventure can be found in every corner. I checked out some beaches, some more ruins from ancient Mayan civilizations, and I met a variety of different people and cultures. And then Alaska had to be sanitized before crossing the border into Mexico. Welcome to Mexico! Yes! Mexico, 
I decided to skip on the touristy Yucatan Peninsula and I rode straight into Chiapas. I visited beautiful waterfalls with turquoise waters, flooded forests and lush mountains. I met Jorge, who showed me around the peaceful Lacanon Mayan lands. But soon after leaving the Lacandones, I experienced the other side of Mexico. I am now just outside a town called uh, Ocosingo, stopped by cops and told to leave the area. It's closed for tourists, a lot going on with locals, 23 people missing. There were about a hundred local young men blocking the road with improvised spike strips. Several tourists have been taken and released several days later after severe beatings. There have been reports of aggressive locals lately. Some tourists and their cars, Russian and German, were attacked by locals. There are a lot of reports about this road. Not sure what's going on here. Oh, here's a rope. Hola, buenas. Una consulta. Oh. Um, desde acá hasta San Cristobal. Sí, este ca es seguro este camino. Sí. Porque hay un camino por. Uh, se llama. Chanal. Sí, sí. de Mendoza, Chanal. Sí. Ahí ponga el map. ¿Está bien esta ruta? Ok, ok, muy bien. Gracias. Adiós. ¿Qué pasa? Hay un bloqueo aquí adelante. ¿Un bloqueado? Personas con armas. Oh. Por, por seguridad no están dejando pasar. Tú puedes pasar si quieres, pero... Ah. Riesgo. There it says Sinaloa. There's a little drawing of a guy with a gun. I just have to stop for a second. I'm riding here on actually a really boring road. Uh, there's nothing here. There is no town, nothing. I come around the corner and there's uh, 10 guys. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't count them. I think it was, f there were I think four standing on the right side and three, Maybe it was seven or eight guys, I don't know. It, it, it felt like a lot of them. Um, heavily armed, heavily armed. The one guy comes up to me and he asked me four times, are you filming, are you filming? I'm like, no, I'm not filming, I'm not filming. No shooting, forbidden to shoot, that's a good sign. No shooting, please. 
Soy mujer. Ah, es. Sí. Hey, yo pensé que era hombre, es una mujer. Hola, money, money. Money, money. money, money. How much you want? 93. 93. Uh, La Paz. ¿Dónde vienes? Vengo de uh, Topo, Topolo Bampo. Sí. Y mi plan era cruzar por Zataquenas, Zapaquenas. Pero tengo unos amigos aquí en México y ellos me dijeron es peligroso en las montañas. Entonces me dijeron toma la ruta princip principal. Esta es más segura. Sí. Adiós. Entonces crucé la frontera de Belice y me quedó en, creo que se llama Pecan. ¿Y hasta dónde va a llegar? Voy hasta Alaska. ¿Hasta Alaska? Sí. ¿Sí? Ya estoy tres años en el camino por todo el mundo. It is 10 past 1 in the morning. I have waited here for three hours. I sat on the little curb there. Cockroaches as big as rats came out. ¿Dónde viene? De Holanda. Holanda. Sí. Anda recorriendo el mundo. Sí. Qué bueno, ¿quién como usted? <laughs> ¿Y usted sola? ¿Mm? ¿Y el compañero? No, sola. ¿Sola? Sí. ¿Solo tú? Sí. ¿Con amigos? Señora, tu dinero. Con nada. Um, in the meantime, I do not see a guest house that was supposed to be there. Mexico proved to be a real challenge in finding parts for my motorcycle too, as they were simply non-existent. Ordering parts from abroad would take weeks, if not months. So I spent hours calling every Honda dealer in Mexico trying to get parts. Ultimately, in a tiny non-Honda shop, I found a sprocket that sort of fitted so I could continue the journey. See, so this is my old sprocket. You can see the state of it. It's really, really worn, worn, worn. You can buy everything here from golden watches to fruits. I love how they arrange everything so nicely. The avocados, the apples in different colors, mangoes. I visited a sea turtle rescue center run by volunteers but without any funding. It took me three days to put that episode together and to tell their story. Thanks to your generous donations, they could expand from protecting one beach to three and providing employment for the local community too. Your response was overwhelming and it moved me deeply. We made a difference here. It's gonna help some of the weak ones. Check this out. Is Mexico beautiful or what? Welcome to Mars. mainland Mexico behind me and crossed over to the peninsula of Baja California. Still Mexico, but to me it felt like a completely different world.
Netherlands. So you were in Netherlands, did you, were you the one that did the, uh, the bike ride with the cops over there? Or no? Yeah. You were? Yeah. I know, Can I get a photo? Of course, yeah. I'm gonna send it to my father-in-law. He watches you all the time. I thought I knew you. I was like, hold up. I think that's you. Welcome to the United States of America. I made it. Oh. My first stop in the United States was San Diego, right at the border. The streets were clean and they were so wide. And after spending so much time in Latin America, I struggled with the big and busy highways. So I headed straight into the desert. And I loved it. Oh, look, 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 a coyote, a coyote over there. It. One rocky hill climb in Nevada didn't quite go as planned and I injured my ankle. Unable to ride my motorcycle, a friend from Moab, Utah, came to pick me up. Uh, now what? <laughs> I stayed in Moab until I was able to, more or less, ride again. So I continued to Colorado. There I was confronted with a big dump of snow. Not what I expected in late spring. Turning around because snow blocked the tracks kind of became a theme for my journey through the United States. Oh, my ankle. Uh, yeah. I've been riding in the rain for the last 60 kilometers. And now I'm almost at 3,000 meters and it's turned into snow. I have 24 kilometers to go, so I am going to push on, but... <laughs> I'm so cold. Yeah, my gloves are drenched, so yeah, my hands are absolutely freezing. Here I am, riding in my summer gear. <laughs> I'm wearing the same stuff as I did riding through all the deserts. Look at Alaska. Look at this, how much ice is on there. <laughs> And my 360 camera. <laughs> I was hoping that Wyoming would be better because the mountains aren't as high as in Colorado. Yeah, I'm digging myself a hole here. But there was tons of snow here too. <sighs> Retreat. Can't go this way then. That's too much. <laughs> it's too much. I am, uh, this, this track is climbing another four or five hundred meters, so <laughs> there is no way. Because I was actually now considering, you know what, I can just push through the snow here, get through, if it then goes down, but it goes up. Same thing in Idaho, just more snow. But when there wasn't any snow blocking my way, I saw the most amazing things. I was blown away by the variety of landscapes in the United States. One can explore an entire year here and not see everything. But that was not my mission. I had to keep moving north. There's a bear, a bear with three cubs. <gasps> three cubs. Look at the babies, look at the babies. They're so close. I better move. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is so cool. There are not a lot of places in the world where you can see this phenomenon. I think this is probably the most famous place in the world. And then of course you have a very famous place in Turkey. But this is rare and it's just amazing to see. Uh, oh. Uh-oh. 
There are probably not many scenarios in which encountering a random guy with a chainsaw while traveling alone in the woods is a good thing. But bizarrely enough, I bumped into Roger at the right place at the right time. For once, I didn't have to turn around and I could actually continue. Oh, you brought a chainsaw with you. Yeah, I'm, I cut a lot of that out to you come by. Oh, it was you, because I was like, somebody has been cutting these logs. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and Chainsaw Roger became a bit of an institution on this channel. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, now I have the handlebar problem. Alright. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna sit on it? Okay. Oh, that's very brave. Oh. Nice, like a boss. <laughs> Welcome to Canada! It was time for another big landmass to cover, Canada. Towns were few and far in between, and there were days when I saw more bears than people. I couldn't be more in awe with the grandness of the landscapes here. Dead end. No. Oh, there. Goes on there. Right, right. Okay. Big rocks here. <laughs> Did it? Did it? A bear, a bear, a bear. There's a black bear on the road. There it goes into the woods. Besides epic scenery and large wildlife, I loved meeting people from all different walks of life in Canada. The Haida people, the Niska, the explorers and the gold miners. That's my dad. That's your dad? In young days, yeah. That's wow. my dad. <laughs> what, what are you guys doing here? Building the road? Gold. Gold. This is for one month. One month. And well, how could I not go and have a look for some gold myself? I think I have some gold. I think I have some gold. I took the epic top of the world highway to finally enter Alaska. And well, it's fair to say I entered it with a bang. Oh! Emotionally and mentally, it was such a surreal feeling to be here after working towards this goal for such a long time. I decided to try and be in the moment as much as I could and to feel and experience Alaska 
to deep in my core. I reached the northern tip of the continent and I have completed my journey. Welcome to Dead Horse, Alaska, end of the Dalton Highway. The Arctic Ocean, between here and the North Pole, there's nothing but water and ice. And now I'm considering to do the polar bear challenge, or I'll take a polar bear plunge. Shall I do it? Arctic Ocean, here I come. I'm taking so long to get here. There's only one thing left to do. So that's it. I have fulfilled my dream. Good thing I have more dreams because that's what we're supposed to do with dreams, right? Make them a reality. Not only dream them, but let them come true. So I have more dreams that I'm going to make happen and share with you. So I'll be back with another season of Itchy Boots. Uh, but before I will be back with a full on season with three episodes per week, I am going to need a break. I am exhausted. I have worked so hard this last season to create all these episodes, to create, I think, almost 150 episodes this season consistently. It's been really, really hard to pull it off. Most nights I've been working until 10, 10.30 at night. Uh, every day. <laughs> there has been no rest. So I've just been working pretty much around the clock to create all these episodes and I am really tired. So I'm going to take a break, but at the same time, I also realized I am such a workaholic <laughs> and I find it really difficult to not do anything. And so for the next few months, I have so many really, really cool things coming up and planned that are going to be a little bit different. I need a break from the constant writing, filming, editing, what I've been doing in the last, what is it? 10 months, 11 months or so. So I need a break from that, but I'm gonna do other things which I realized are so cool that I also really wanna share them with you. So keep an eye on my channel. I might be back sooner than you think. So if you haven't done it yet, then you can click that bell button because then you'll get a notification when I'm gonna be back on the channel. But there is going to be a break. I, I, I need a break. I need to take a break. And yeah, I realized part of the reason why I have been working so hard the last months is because the window to reach Alaska was so short or like to cross the northern part of the United States and Canada and Alaska, that window is really short. And I wanted to visit and film as many places as I could along the way. But to do that, I had to write and film more than three times per week. So as I was bringing out three episodes per week, I was doing a lot more to just try and see and film as much as I could. So many of you noticed that the, the time lag between being somewhere and filming and releasing the video on YouTube has steadily increased over the season. That time lag became bigger to, to allow me to have enough time to make it into Alaska in time. So I want to thank everybody who has watched this entire season or perhaps e even also the seasons before this and who's always been here to support me and to encourage me. I really, really appreciate it. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support and for the watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. 
I did my very best to create all these videos and it means the world to me that you like watching them. So that was it for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and then I'm gonna see you in the next season. <laughs> Outdoor shower as well. Look at that. That's my shower. GS crowd to the rescue. <laughs> Me gusta mucho porque ahí hay una escuela y tienen 50, 60. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. Vaya, pero excelente, excelente. Muy bien. Ok, adiós. Chao. Gracias. Cualquier cosa, que es donde esté, contacto, cuenta conmigo. Gracias. Necesita ayuda. Impresionante.